in your life. Not only for your career, it is very important for your career, be it as a researcher or even if you at some point you even leave the academic um, 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 frame, frames. Um, even for your personal life, it's a very important experience, I would say. So I can only motivate you to look for competitive grants. So I'm happy to introduce to you some of the most attractive funding um, programs inside Horizon 2020. And this slide shows you the overview of my, of my presentation. First, I will give you a general introduction to the ERC. And then I will give you an overview on the four types of grants the ERC has. The starting and consolidated grants, the advanced grant, and the synergy grant that is new inside the, the ERC grants family. I will then provide you some statistics, and my last slide will provide you links and documents out of all your private use once you start um, checking what grant could be attractive for you at home. What is the ERC? This slide shows you again the Horizon 2020 framework program. And we have seen before that we have these two parts that are rather applied research and top down, predefined topics where you have collaborative projects. The ERC is here in the Pillar Excellent Science. And it is a monobeneficiary um, type of program and it is a single PI program. So this is really different um, regarding the other, the, the, the main part of Horizon 2020. It is for single PIs and it is bottom up, so no predefined topics. I'd like you to really understand what the ERC is and also what it is not. So you can really get an idea um, if it is something for you and when it would be the best moment for you. As we have seen before, um, framework programs, they are quite old. And the idea behind the framework program is to make, the, make Europe a competitive place, to, to fund um, um, research and innovation in Europe. But then at a certain point, um, um, in, in Europe, we realize that we need also basic research. Um, we, it's not enough to have the, the national funding agencies, but we need um, um, basic funding agency on a European level that is complementing the um, national funding agencies. And this is how the ERC was born. It was set up 10 years ago. And the idea behind is to have the best uh, the, the most talented researchers in Europe and to encourage the highest quality research in Europe. So the mission of the ERC is to strengthen and to shape the European research system. You probably know that we have a high diversity of research funding systems in Europe. We have some, some uh, very old research um, funding agencies in the old member states and so in, in some of the new member states, rather, the idea of having national research agencies is rather new. So the ERC also wants to, to be an example how to set up um, a competitive research. Mm -hmm. um, so the, the mission of the ERC is also to bring about new and unpredictable scientific and technology, technological <coughs> discoveries. So it's really about being very innovative and prepare the European research base for global challenges. And the ERC does this with support for excellent individual researchers. So what are the aims of the ERC? It's individual support for the most talented researchers. The ERC is open to any field of science. 
and CSU provides scientific and financial independence of the grant team. And this is a very important point. So once you have a New York City grant, you need to have a host institution in the European country, but once you have the ERC grant, you are very free. The, the grant belongs to you. You can even be mobile inside Europe, so you can change your host institution if you find a host institution um, that provides you better conditions. You can move with your grant. And you are really the PI of your project and of your, your uh, money. So you, um, you spend the money and you publish as you like. So there is no supervisor that can tell you um, that can tell you this soon you should publish. It's it's you are the boss of the project. And the ERC has an extremely high visibility in Europe. Um, once you have an ERC grant, you have a very high status. So don't underestimate this this point. It is really um, uh, it will advance your career. What are the principles of the ERC? There are yearly calls um, and there's open, co open competition. We have the four types uh, of grants, the starting grant for the young researchers, the consolidated grant, advanced grant and synergy grant. The scientific council is led by scientists. We have a scientific council with 22 scientists with a worldwide reputation. The projects are evaluated via classical peer review. And the ESC completes national funding programs, as I said before. The only criteria of the ERC are excellence of the principal investigator and excellence of the project. How can ERC projects be characterized? They are novel, creative, and innovative, be it the aim, be it the kind of collaboration, be it the methodology. It is a kind of major out-of-the-box idea. Normally there are substantial advantages at the frontiers of knowledge. So normal ERC projects are basic research um, in, in the, in the um, um, so the, it's important that you, you generate new knowledge. It can be an, an applied topic, but you should um, somehow create new knowledge. Normally, ERC projects are of high risk and of high gain. So you don't need to have a high risk, but you need to have a high gain. So um, high risk can be, it's okay when you have high gain. And you need to demonstrate feasibility. So it is important that you have the control that it is feasible. What are the eligibility criteria? So for the starting round and the consolidated round, your research age is important. For the starting round, you must be between two and seven years after the PhD degree. And for the consolidated round, you are between seven and twelve years after the PhD degree. And these, these rules are applied very strictly. There are reasons for extension. Um, for, for, for mothers, you can have one and a half years more per child you have. For fathers, it's the actual time that you took off as paternity leave. Then if you, if you are a medical doctor, and if you had um, clinical training, you can also have a longer eligibility. Um, uh, um, slot and also if you have military service or long term illness of yourself um, or of a close relative, you can request a prolongation of the eligibility window. If you are not sure if your case comes for prolongation of the eligibility window, please contact your national contact point in the country that you want to go. If you are a medical doctor, there are special conditions. The medical, uh, the MD degree is not, um, does not count as a PhD degree, so there are special rules. In order to, to um, check your eligibility, um, it's always the first January of the year of the call. So 
So for example, the calls of 2018, it would be the 1st of January 2018 to come um, backwards to your PhD degree. Other eligibility criteria. Your host institution needs to be in a European member state or associated country, such as Switzerland or Israel, um, Turkey, and so on. And there should not be an overlap with a running ERC grant, and there are some restrictions on the resubmissions. So if your proposal was not successful, there are some restrictions that apply, but I will come to that later. Some information on the starting and consolidated grant. Who of you are interested in a starting or consolidated grant? Okay. The um, starting and consolidated grants are for starting uh, for researchers who start their first research program or project. Um, or for consolidating researchers who already started with an own research group. The requirements are, the, as I said before, the excellence of the principal investigator and of the project. The ERC wants to have a clear commitment in terms of time. So for the starting grant, um, a PI needs to be working on the ERC project 50% of his overworking time, and in the case of the consolidated one, it's 40%. And you need also to, to, be, to be based in Europe at least 50% of your time. So you can have other appointments in, for example, outside Europe, but you need to be a certain uh, time uh, be based in Europe. And this can change over the years. But overall, it must be this 50 or 40 percent. When you think that the ERC could be something for you, go for it. But I would say it's important to check the chances because there's no point to um, to, to invest the time if 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 it's not the right moment now. Perhaps you better wait till you have more publications to be competitive. So please check well when is the best moment. Of course, you can you can submit your proposal, your project to the ERC to an ERC call, and uh, in parallel to other funding agencies. In the end, however, um, you can only have one your project only funded by one institution, of course, and the ERC checks this. Um, uh, you also have to disclose the other applications that you do in parallel, but you, uh, as long as you're transparent, you can submit your project to other funding institutions as well. So, um, how to check if, if it's the right moment to submit your, your project? So, this, the, check the work program. The work program is a label, label document, document where you find all the, the framework conditions for the ERC calls. And in the work program, they state that for the starting round, they expect at least one important publication without the presence of your PhD supervisor. For the consolidated round, it would be several publications as an independent researcher. This is um, maybe not enough, so you should ask yourself if you belong to the best researchers at your age in your discipline. And it's certainly a good idea to check the profiles of the past ERC grant holders, starting grant and or consolidated grant. So go on the on the ERC website. Um, they have a very attractive website, and there's a site with the funded projects where you can look for um, for start for the different types of grants. You can look for the different countries, and you can also search with keywords. For example, with your um, keywords describing the discipline the research topic. And then you can you can screen the profiles of the ERC grantees and check at what um, um, uh, what their background is and how many publications they had, etc. What are the funding rates? For the starting round you can get up well, for um, 1.5 million euro for five years 
normally um, ERC projects run for five years. Um, for the consolidated one, it's up to two million euro for five years. So you see, it's a lot of money. It's really attractive funding. Um, you can request additional funding in case you relocate from a third country, so for example, from Japan to your main country, and also if you need access to uh, large research facilities or if you need to buy um, infrastructures. You have to budget that well, you have to explain and justify well for what and why you need this additional funding. But if you do so normally, this additional funding is granted. So in the, in the case of the starting round, you can ask up to 500,000 euro more. In the case of the consolidated round, you can request up to 750,000 euro more. So it's really attractive funding. How is the evaluation done? As I said, it is done um, via peer review. The ERC has 25 uh, um, uh, thematic evaluation panels that are active. You find the description of these panels, of the disciplines, in the work program and on the ERC website. The names of the panel chairs and the panel members are published. The names of the panel chairs are published before the deadline of the calls and the names of the panel members only afterwards. But there are two sets of panel active, alternating every second year. So, um, in, for example, in 2018, um, the panel that was active in 2016 will be active again. So you can check the names of the panel members of 2016 and you get an idea who could be sitting in your panel. And that's a good idea because you will write your, your proposal also in function of the disciplines um, being present in your, um, in your panel. That's really important. You submit the full proposal at once before the deadline of, of each call. But, the, um, but your, your proposal will be evaluated in two steps. In the first evaluation step, the, um, the evaluators will only have access to a short synopsis, a summary, five-page summary of your proposal, plus the information on you as a PI, so it's two pages CV and two pages track record. And they will do the evaluation based on this very short information they have on you and on your project. And then they will decide if they want to read the whole story and invite you also for an interview. So in the second evaluation step, they will have access to the whole proposal, including the, the full proposal that has 15 pages. And they will also send your proposal to external referees. The external referees are specialists of your domain. The panel members um, probably are only generalists. Perhaps you have specialists in the panel, perhaps not. But the, the remote referees that will be specialists. So you can already see that the, the, it is important that you write a proposal that is for generalists and specialists. In the second evaluation step, you will be invited to an interview. So you will be asked to present your research in a, in a, in a 30 minutes slot to the panel. And this is a very important uh, procedure because they, they will see you, they, they can check if it's really you who wrote the proposal and if you are the right person to, to carry out this five years project. If you are invited to the interview, um, many of the many of the NCPs in the different countries, and also many of the host institutions, that provide you uh, interview trainings. Call timetable. For a starting round, we will have the 2018 call opening in July. It will very probably be on the 18th of July. We set deadline uh, in mid-October. There will be something like 400 rounds distributed. For the consolidated round, the next call will open at the end of October. 
And he said that guy in February is about 300 grants that will be um, um, granted. The call time table looks more or less the same every year. So the next, um, the, the 2019 starting grant will very probably open in July 2018 and so on. And for the consolidated grant it's the same every year one call in autumn. Some information on the advanced grant. For whom are the advanced grants? The advanced grants are designed for exceptional and established research leaders with groundbreaking um, um, project ideas. So the advanced grants are normally advanced grant holders are those researchers with a very, uh, very famous name. It's again high risk, high gain research. And also in the case of the advanced grant, the, the ERC requests quite a um, big commitment, at least 30% of the working time on the project and 50% of the working time in a European country. And this is checked by the ERC. Um, so the ERC checks this time to treat um, these, these obligations. Again, I would say it, it makes sense to check the own, um, the own competitiveness Again, with checking who got an advanced grant in the past. The evaluation is done very similar to the starting and consolidated grant evaluation procedure, but without interviews. Somehow the, the ERC trusts more to the established researchers, but for the young researchers, they really want to see how these persons are, who these persons are. So I skip this. Funding rates. Um, funding rates is 2.5 million for projects for up to five years. And again, the PIs can request additional funding in the case they're, they are moving to, from a third country to Europe, and in the case they need access or um, to, to large research facilities, or they need to buy research facilities. It's up to one million euro additional funding, so it's, it's, it's extremely attractive funding. This slide shows you the timetable. Um, the, there's actually one advanced round called Open, with a deadline on the 31st of August, and the next advanced round call will be one year later. And we think that there will be something around 2045 rounds. <coughs> Some information on the synergy grant. The synergy grant is a new type of grant. There were pilot calls in 2012 and 13, and then the ERC assessed if we need this, this um, grant type. And they concluded, yes, um, we, need, we need it, it's an important grant scheme. So they introduced this type of grant in the 2018 work program. What are the objectives of the synergy grant? It's about bringing together complementary skills, knowledge and resources in, combined in new ways in order to jointly address, address ambitious research topics. Synergy grants should lead to breakthroughs that, that would not have been possible without this kind of collaboration. And ESC projects should promote substantial advances at the frontiers of, two, of nowadays knowledge. Synergy grant projects are designed for at least two and maximally four principal investigators that can be located on the same floor of the same institution or in different institutions in the same country or in different countries in Europe. The whole institution needs to be in Europe, but any kind of arrangement of the PIs is possible. And in the projects um, that were granted in 2012 and 13, any type of collaboration or um, uh, geographical distribution of the PI um, was granted. The profile of the principal investigators is normally an advanced grant type or consolidated grant type or perhaps starting grant, but then it must be a very promising profile. Again, um, the PIs must be working at least for 50% uh, 
of their working time on the project, and a minimum, they must be in Europe, at least 30% minimally um, in Europe. No, 30% on the project and 50% in Europe. So the, 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 um, the synergy run projects, they are not the typical collaborative projects um, as we have in the other parts of Horizon 2020. It's really groundbreaking basic research. And, the, uh, and we think that the synergy grants are extremely competitive. So we also think that there will be a um, high oversubscription in the, in the next call. So please think twice if you want to submit to the next um, synergy grant, grant call. We expect only exceptional proposals to be funded. And as I said, it's not a, a successful normal collaboration, it's much more. And you also have to think how to collaborate um, with the um, other PIs that are probably located um, on the other side of Europe. The um, Synergy Round called 2018 is expected to open in mid July with a deadline in November. And we think that there will only be 25 to 30 grants um, being granted. And again, we think that um, there will be one call every summer with a deadline in, in autumn. Um, the, um, unlike the other grant types, the synergy grant projects will be for six years maximally, with funding for up to 10 million euro for the six years, so it's very attractive. And again, um, the PIs can request more funding in the case of relocation of a PI, so this would apply for you, um, and this, um, when large infrastructure is needed. Now some statistics, I picked out, um, I picked some statistics that I thought could be um, interesting for you. So this slide shows you the number of grants that were, um, um, that went to the different European countries since the beginning of the year, since 2007. You can see that the most attractive countries were the UK, Germany, France, Netherlands, Switzerland, Spain, Italy, Israel. You can see the blue bars representing non-nationals in the country. And you can see that UK and Switzerland were very attractive, uh, very attractive countries for non-nationals. Especially Switzerland, Switzerland was doing very well because, especially because we have very young nationals in Switzerland. So Switzerland is a very international country, but also countries as UK, Germany. You see also the green bars that uh, represent the um, nationals of a country outside the country. And you see that especially Germany and Italy have some problems with brain drain. This slide shows the success rates of the ERC grants um, since the beginning of the ERC 2007. And you can see that the highest success rates um, we have in two associated countries, Switzerland and Israel. Normally the success rate is among 12 to 15 percent overall in all European countries. Um, it depends a lot uh, I, I would say for those researchers who have a, a high level, the success rate is much higher. And the problem is sometimes that in many European countries, the national funding is not attractive anymore. Um, the competition is very high, so many researchers desperately submit projects to the ERC, so this lowers the success rate. But for really competitive researchers, the success rate, I would say, is 20 to 25%. So don't underestimate your chance. This slide shows you the age distribution for the different types of grants. So you see normally in the case of the starting grant, the yellow bars, we have average ages of 32 to up to perhaps 40, 41. And for the candidate grant, it will be um, like 36 to, to 42 perhaps. And we have 
less cases of congenital rats here in this graph because in the first year we only had starting rats covering um, the whole age period from 2 to 12 years after the PhD. And only after some years the starting rat was split into starting and consolidated rat. This slide shows you the, um, the nationality of the non-European grant holders. As you can see, we have quite a lot of Japanese researchers um, as ERC grant is 25 overall since the beginning of the ERC. And this last slide shows you the um, top um, host institutions um, since the beginning of the ERC, we can see that the top host institution is the highest number of, of grants are in the UK, followed by two Swiss institutions, then two Swiss federal institutes of technologies, one based in Zurich, one in Luxembourg, and then followed by Israeli um, host institutions. In, um, when you submit, when you, when you select your future host institution, um, it's not the, um, the, the host institution is not important. You are evaluated as a principal investigator, not the host institution. The, the advantage of having a, a successful or important host institution is rather that they have much experience with um, hosting, with, uh, with um, administrating, with administration of the ERC grants. So the host institutions who already had ERC grants in the past, they know about the procedures, um, they know about all the financial management of the grants, and they have, um, uh, they have, uh, they are very well prepared, prepared to, to help you to set up your grant, to submit your, your proposal. But if, uh, on this, um, um, it is certainly a, a, an advantage if you are at a house institution that has this experience. The last slide um, provides you um, with the um, important website. Um, the ERC website is certainly important to screen through, and then the work program is the so called Holy Bible of the ERC calls. Um, it's all a legal framework. Unfortunately, the 2018 work program is not available um, right now, but should be avail available in, in two or three weeks. And this link um, leads you to the work program 2017. And then there's another document that will be published soon. It's the information for applicants for every call type. So once the call is open, the ERC will publish this information for applicants where you find all the practicalities about the grant application. This link uh, guides you to the participant portal where you will submit your, your uh, proposal. And then this link um, guides you directly to the NCP um, institution of your, um, your uh, future host country. Get in contact with your national contact point early. Normally, the national contact points provide many services. For example, the eResearch My Host Institution, um, we, we provide services similar to EuroAccess. So we, we, um, we organize information sessions. We organize applicants' trainings. We also do this via webinars. So you are, if you are still outside Europe at the time you write your proposal, you may profit of webinars. Um, we provide service, services such as idea check. We check if your project idea could be um, fitting to the respective um, Horizon 2020 program. We, um, we answer your questions via Skype or via email, uh, via telephone, whatever. Um, and we also um, provide dedicated applicants trainings and interview trainings uh, for the candidates that are uh, invited to the interview in the case of the ERC starting or candidate grant. So please contact us early and we can support you a lot. Just a quick comment on, on links. We are talking about links on the, on the screen. Uh, obviously, <laughs> the presentations will be made available after the some weeks after the, the, the event, so you will be able to, if you don't want to 
make the search yourselves, you will be able to click on these documents actually, because clicking now on the screen is not possible in no, not. not yet. Yeah. So um, with this, I close for the first part um, of the ERC training, and I'm now open to take your questions. I'd like to ask uh, regarding this uh, synergigram. There, there are two PI uh, researchers, and then, and then they have to, it's, it's one grant, they apply for one grant, or everybody apply for? They apply for one grant, it's two to four PIs, and they apply for one grant for one project. So it's really about, um, um, uh, um, about interdisciplinary research or tackling a problem from, from different sides. Um, different sides. So it's, it's not about just normal collaboration as we collaborate in your daily research life, but it's really kind of complementary in the disciplinary research project. But one round, one round. Okay, after, for example, if we imagine that one, one researcher is, for example, from Japan, after he finds the institute in, a, in, a, in Europe, how, how will be the sharing of the money after? There will be two PA, for example, we can imagine we have two PA researchers, who will, who will after manage the money? Um, you, you will have a budget, you submit the budget yeah. um, with, um, with the money that goes to each um, PI and each PI will get the money. So uh, actually the, the contract is made between the European uh, Commission and the host institution. And so the money goes to the host institution of the two PIs, to each host institution. And then the host institution has a um, contract with the PI. And so, but the money belongs to the PI. It belongs to the host institution, but the contract, um, um, it belongs to the PI. Okay. And uh, after, for example, if you are looking for the host institution, who, who, has to, who, who you have to contact? Um, this depends. Um, this depends. Normally, it would be um, the head of institute. Um, Perhaps you would, you would um, um, if you have a collaboration in a certain country, you know, at a certain in, uh, institution, then you would go perhaps be a head of, of, of um, institute or department, um, and then it depends on the institution who would decide. So at the time when you submit your proposal, this, this is true for every grant type, you have to submit a binding statement of the host institution that then it hosts you. And this, this binding um, host institution letter, the host institution agrees with all the um, um, uh, with, with what they provide to you, such as uh, academic freedom and the, the budget, the, the money that you will get, and so on. So in order to get this binding statement from your institution, you need the okay of some person at the host institution. And who this person is, it depends on the on the university. Perhaps it's the it's the president. Perhaps it's the the rector of research at the given institution. Um, and you have to find out who this person is that provides you the the signature of this binding statement. Okay, after we have a discuss. Thank you very much. We can also discuss in the break if you wish. Okay, thank you. Other questions? Uh, so, I'm going to ask about the evaluation process. Um, in your slide, you mentioned that there's 25 panels. Does that mean that there's 25 team of each research field or 25 individuals who cover entire research? It's 25 uh, teams, 25 panels with each 12 to 15 panel members. So, so each, each panel is composed with numbers of? Yes, right. Okay. More questions? But maybe a follow-up question about that. There are 25 panels and between, uh, let's say, 10 and 15 or 16 panel members uh, per panel, but in the first step of the review, not all of the 16 received the, 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 the proposal, right? Is that correct? No, all, all received the proposal. Okay. In the first evaluation step, all receive the um, part B1 with the synopsis and the CD parts 
of the PI. Um, but there will be, I will talk about that in the in the second round. So um, two to three lead panelists will read in detail um, the, um, the proposal. But all of them read even the first part. So they should read it. So they will have an overview at least, um, and then they will they will meet after they have read remotely and commented on the um, proposals. Um, they will meet in Brussels and they will discuss. The, um, the proposals. So all panelists will have read, they will uh, have at least a uh, good overview on, on each proposal. The final point being, even in part B1, you still have to convince all 10 or 16 of them, of them and not, on, not only the panel leaders. Right, That's right. Nice. Other questions? Thanks for your important information. So, oh, is the age limit for uh, young and solid consolidator grant very strict? So the age distribution of grant E in the statistics looks wider than expected from the typical age of the PhD. And um, yes, um, uh, this eligibility um, criterion is applied very strictly. Um, um, but if you have, if a, if a woman has children, if she has three children. That has allow, allowed her to have an eligibility window um, five, five, uh, four and a half years more. So um, they can be very old. For example, in the in the humanities um, in Europe, many PhD students students finish their PhD at a rather late age. For example, over thirty. Um, and if uh, a woman has children, then she can easily be. 45 uh, and still be eligible for a consultative round. So this is why we have a huge age distribution. Yes, um, it's the um, PhD um, date that is written on your official document. So this depends also on the country. Normally it is um, the date of your defense. Oh. Other questions? Maybe? Maybe not. So I will continue with the second part. 